I'm Sebastian St. James. What are the top 10 dividend stocks right now? Well, firstly, what are my selection criteria? Number one, the dividend yield must be 5% or greater because we're after high dividend yield stocks. So that's my first criteria. Secondly, we're not after any micro caps, so market cap must be 100 million plus. Thirdly, I'm specifically after good stocks. Some quality here, so number three, they must be profitable, and number four, they must have positive cash flow. So no rubbish stocks here. So should we add more criteria? I've looked at that list and based on that criteria alone, there's only 15 stocks which match that. So that's about as narrow as we can go. Here are the top 10 stocks as we can see or we can't see. Oh, they seem to be whitened out. How rude. What we can tell is they are in materials, diversified financials, retailing, energy, consumer services and supplies, but we don't know what the names are. But we do know the dividend yield at the top is 17.04%. Wow, I hope that this is a good stock. 15.15 all the way down to 6.67. That's quite a selection there. As you can see, their earnings are all positive and their cash flows are all positive and really that's what we're after. So shall I reveal stock number one? I shall. At the bottom there is Macmillan Shakespeare Limited. So that's our commercial services and suppliers and it's returning a dividend yield at the moment of 6.67%. Macmillan Shakespeare Limited provides services of salary, packaging, novated leases and fleet and asset management and related financial products and services. The group employs a highly committed team of 1300 people across Australia, New Zealand and in the UK and domestically manages programs for some of the largest public, private and charitable organisations. Well, that's quite a spin. Let's have a look at their website. Well, here it is. Pretty people smiling. Interestingly, one of the first things on their website is their share price at $9.74. Why is that so prominent that it has to be like the number one thing that you see on the website? I don't know. It tells you about their priority. Remember, their products are novated leases, salary packaging, things like that. We see a mother going shopping, holding her baby. What's that got to do with their products? Nothing. Okay, there's a couple there in a business setting. That makes sense. A family going on a picnic. What's that got to do with their product? I will never know. Some guy working. Okay, well that at least kind of makes sense. Salary packaging and somebody in medicine. So overall, I think their website has very little to do with their products, really. It's just a whole lot of smiling faces and families. This is Macmillan Shakespeare's corporate office, as you can see, nicely appointed. And there is Jill, the receptionist. Hello, Jill. Actually, I have no idea what her name is. It could be Jill. If you're watching Jill, leave a comment below. This is a one year graph of Macmillan Shakespeare in the red and green. And we're comparing that to the ASX 200, which is index XJO. You can't buy the XJO directly, but that is the ticker symbol for the index itself. And that's in black. As you can see, Macmillan Shakespeare this year for the one year has underperformed the S&P 200 quite a bit actually at minus 25.649%. The ASX 200 has gone down by about 10-ish percent. So yeah, that's a bad underperforming. At the two year graph, we see Macmillan Shakespeare has actually done rather well, except right up until recently, they were just doing so well there. Let's go back a bit further. If we look at the five year graph, we will see that Macmillan Shakespeare was outperforming the ASX, rather doing rather well. And now look, it's just done terribly, basically. Down, down, down. You would have been a lot better off putting your money in the ASX based on this graph. That's the graphs. So I'm not very impressed. Now give me the actual returns. These are total returns, which means they're the price increases in the shares plus dividends. Minus 19% on the one year. On the three year, minus 6.6%. Oh, these are terrible. Over five years, annualized, it is minus 2.9%. And you'd have to go back to 10 years to get in positive territory. And you'd only be earning 2.7% a year. So very unimpressed with that. Are they a value stock? Let's have a look considering how badly they've been doing. The price to earnings ratio is 9.45 and the market overall is 14.31. So yes, for price to earnings they are a value stock, but for price to book, no, 2.8 and the average for the market is 1.55. Let's have a look at their growth rates, see how they're performing. 
Over the 10 years, they've actually been doing quite well, fairly positive across. The five year, well, they've started to struggle there in dividends and book value. Now, this video is about dividends, so we're paying particular attention to the dividends row. Over the one year, they've actually done fairly well, but importantly, the two year forecast they're expecting earnings to go down by 4.5%. That's not good. And dividends to go up by about 10%. Why are dividends going up? Why earnings are going down? That'd be a very good question to ask. Let's look at the track record of the dividends. 73, 74, we're going up, down to 34 cents per share, and then back up to 61.3. So fairly consistent, but last year was a big issue for them. Stock at position number nine is JB Hi-Fi, which is retailing. How much is their dividend yield? It is 7.19%. That's not bad. It's very good. JB Hi-Fi is a specialty discount retailer of branded home entertainment products. The group's products particularly focus on consumer electronics, software, including music, games and movies, white goods and appliances. The company primarily operates from standalone destination sites and shopping centre locations and its online stores in Australia and New Zealand. OK, they're in the New Zealand as well. And here is their website. Oh, well, that looks really cheap and nasty. It looks like an old fashioned catalogue, to be honest. But that is the image they're going for. If you look in the store itself, it basically looks like the same thing. <laughs> So at least the website is consistent there with the actual store. Over the one year, we notice that JB Hi-Fi has underperformed minus 24% as opposed to around about minus 10 for the ASX 200. So a very bad year for them share price wise. Over two years, JB Hi-Fi was outperforming there for a little bit and no, they've gone down. They've recovered a bit <laughs> and they've gone down terribly. So not a good two year period for them. Over five years, well, that looks a bit better. They were flirting in and out for quite a while there and a massive drop around March of 2020 by the look of it. Then they've come up quite a bit. And overall, if you've held them for five years, you would have got 54.715%. That's total, not annualized. And you would have beat the ASX 200. However, more recently, you would not have done so well. So we have to keep all that in mind. The shareholder return this year is minus 16.2 percent. Now keep in mind that all shares are going down so a number like that on its own is not surprising. If we go back to the three year it's 13.9 percent that's fairly good. Five year it's 13.8, 10 years 21.8. So if you've been holding them for the last 10 years you would be very very happy but more recently no not so much. Are they a value stock? Well, their price to earnings at the moment is 9.53. The market is 14.31. So yes, they are on that. Price to book 3.34 and 1.55 for the market overall. The growth rates over the last 10 years have actually done really well. Look at that. 10.69.4. Last five years, positive, positive, positive. Ah, one year they've had a big issue. Minus 42.9 on cash flow. Wow, okay, that's been a bit of an issue. Their two year forecast is earnings per share minus 16.5 and dividends minus 16.2. That is a terrible outlook. Let's have a look at their dividend history. 287 cents per share in the last full year, 189 in the previous, 142, 132. They've been quite consistent in the dividends over the last few years, so that is a good sign. And maybe it's our seventh option. What is it? It is NCK, which is Nick Scully. It is in retailing and it has a dividend yield of 8.13%, very high. What is Nick Scully? Let me tell you. Nick Scully Limited is engaging in sourcing and retailing of household furniture and related accessories. NCK operates in Australia and New Zealand. So they're basically a furniture store. And here is their actual website, which is interesting because they've got a clearance sale must end, which suggests that they're all about price. And yet if you look at the price of that particular sofa, it was $5.5,000 down to 3.490. Yeah, not a particularly cheap sofa by any stretch of the imagination. Now, if we look in their store, this is allegedly a picture from inside their store and it looks rather fancy. So they are a high end retailer, but a retailer who is still interested in price, which we noticed on their website. 
in the one year graph of Nick Scully, it's actually been doing rather well until just recently when it's gone down and well and truly underperformed at minus 29%. The ASX 200 has been around about minus 10. So no, you've actually done fairly poorly over the last 12 months. If we roll it back to two years though, you can see they're outperforming the ASX rather well until they've just kissed that line recently and then sort of gone back up. So 22% overall for the last two years, which is not bad. They've outperformed the ASX 200. If we look at the five year chart, well, you've been in and out of the ASX 200 and then something's happened there back in March. And now you've gone up, up, up and actually done rather well over the last five years until very recently where you've come down 28.2% within the period. So this one year, the total return has been minus 31.6%. But if you've had it for three years annualized, it would be 16.4. Five years is 13.4. 10 is 25.2. They've actually done very well up till this year. Are you a value of stock or not? Well, your price to earnings is 7.69 in comparison to 14.31. So yes, they are value stock. Their growth rates overall over the last 10 years, you can see 14.6, 30.4 doing very well over the last five years, all positive figures and great figures as well. And over the last one year, very good figures as well. 41% there on sales, 52%, 35%. Yep, that's quite impressive. They haven't given a projected forecast, however, so not so healthy on the share graph for the last year or so, but the fundamentals of the business seem to be intact there with some rather impressive growth rates. If we look at the dividends, we will notice they are 40, 45, 47.5 and 65. So that's consistent and impressive. Our next stock is Woodside Energy Group, which is of course an energy stock and it is returning 8.83% dividend yield. Woodside Energy Group, who are they? Well, they're Woodside Petroleum, renamed after a merger deal, which I'll explain to you. Woodside Energy Group, formerly Woodside Petroleum, is an Australian oil and gas company involved in hydrocarbon exploration, evaluation, development, production and marketing. WPL also has a portfolio of offshore platform, oil floating production, storage and offloading vessels. WPL also holds operating assets both in Australia and internationally. And this is their website which is rather plain, but they've got a great big quote there. In June 2022, Woodside and BHP Petroleum merged to create a new chapter as a global energy company. Together, we are building a better future. So this is very important here. BHP, Woodside Petroleum merged together as far as the oil and gas assets are concerned. And they've basically done some rebranding to Woodside Energy. BHP Group and Woodside Petroleum entered into a share sale agreement for the merger of BHP oil and gas portfolio with Woodside by an all stock merger on 22nd of November 2021. On completion of the merger, the combined company is expected to have a high margin oil portfolio, long life LNG assets and the financial resilience to help supply the energy needed for the global growth and development over the energy transition. Transition to what? to renewables, presumably. Completion of the merger is on track and targeted for the 1st of June, 2022. So that's probably finished. BHP is expected to receive 914.8 million newly issued Woodside shares. This is how it goes. If you hold Woodside Petroleum shares, then now you have Woodside Energy shares. They've converted across. If you hold BHP, then you keep holding a BHP, but now in addition to those shares, you have now some Woodside Energy shares. That's basically how the merger affects the shareholders. And this is what their oil rig looks like. Wow, that is very impressive. One of my favorite things about owning mining stocks and petroleum stocks is the amazing pictures, their massive equipment, the great big trucks that are 15 times higher than a person. I love those photos. Of course, it doesn't sway me as far as what I'm gonna buy, but if I do end up owning them, yeah. I like the annual reports and the pictures I get in them. Let's take one more look at that pretty picture and proceed to look at the graph. The one year graph of Woodside Energy, and this of course goes back to Woodside Petroleum, that's what this is based on, was underperforming the ASX 200 for a while until it's come right up now and is well and truly outperforming the ASX 200 in the last year. That's really good. 29% return when the whole share market overall has done dismally at about minus 10. So well done to them. 
over the last two years. They underperformed there for a while, matched the ASX 200, underperformed, underperformed, and then recently have gone up quite substantially. So this is like a resurrection story here. Over the last five years, they've flirted in and out, and then down, 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 certainly coming up, but have underperformed the ASX 200 over the last five years, only gone up by 2.9%. So all their growth is about now, and you only need to go back five years, and they weren't a particularly good stock overall, which includes the last year or two, but now they're doing a bit better. This year, the total shareholder return is 49.2%. Wow, but if you've held it for three years, you've basically done nothing. Five years is 5.8%. I would not still not be happy with that return. It's positive, but I'm expecting about 10%. And over the last 10 years, no, not happy with 4.1 either. Are they value stock? Well, at 8.41, price to earnings, the market is 14.31 and 1.59. So they're about on parity with price to book. So what's their growth rates been like? Over the last 10 years, well, they've all been positive, but only just. 3.4% annualized a year is not impressive for sales. Yeah, yeah, basically fairly ordinary. Over the last five years, well, they've picked up a bit now, except in their book value where they've gone backwards. Decreasing in book value is interesting because it means the company overall is shrinking. It does mean they're probably writing off some assets, which is why they're going down. They may be downsizing their operations overall. Not necessarily the worst thing, particularly if the sales and the earnings are going up. But that's what that's about. Over the last one year, they've actually done incredibly well. A fantastic year, as was reflected by the share graph, which we saw earlier. Now, their forecast going forward is on earnings to go up 15.8%, which is amazing. This year, they've gone up 151.4%. And then in over the two-year forecast, expecting to go up again. Not so much, but still an impressive growth. And their dividends is 27.2. Yep, okay, that's impressive. Let's have a look at their dividends. We read from the bottom up. 134.5 cents per share, then 53.2, so massive drop two years ago, up to 186.1. So not particularly consistent, but they are up at the moment and they are predicting that the dividends will go up by 27.2% over the next two years. So who could our next share be? Why, it's Super Retail Group, of course. They are in retailing and 8.95% is their dividend yield. Super Retail Group Limited is primarily involved in retailing of auto parts and accessories, tools and equipment, retailing of boating, camping and outdoor equipment, fishing equipment and apparel, and retailing of sports equipment and apparel. Well, that's a store that a blokey bloke would love. This is their website. I have some issues with their website. Why? Well, because see how narrow it is? That's full screen and it's quite clearly built for not a browser. This is where I've took it off. Any website that makes itself particularly narrow is not respecting a normal PC and they've tried to get a middle ground so that the mobile phone can look at it and the full screen 60 by nine browser can look at it. No, that's not what you do on a modern website. You make it dynamic. So it automatically scales to the device. You're a big company. You've got the money to do this. This is unacceptable on a website of a large company. If you're a local milk bar, fine, this is what you do, but not on a large company, you can do better. So what brands are we talking about with this super group? I don't shop at super group, well you may. Their brands are Super Cheap Auto, Rebel, BCF, which is Boating, Camping, Fishing, and MacPack. And this is what it looks like in their stores. This is a Super Cheap Auto, basically racks and racks of car equipment, really. Over the last one year, this is the share graph. Well, it's underperformed the ASX, sort of met it, and then as it's gone on, well and truly underperformed at minus 33%. So not a good last 12 months for them at all. Let's take that back to two years, and well, they've outperformed the ASX 200 over that period of time, done rather well, and then more recently, no, they've come down and gone under underperformed over two years. What a shame. A former success story that more recently is basically doing terrible. What a shame. Over the last five years, in and out of the ASX 200, had a terrible period back there in March, grew again, go up, 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 but basically underperformed again. So on the three time periods that we're looking at, one year, two years, and five years, they've underperformed in each of those. No, I'm not impressed yet. So the return over the last one year has been minus 31%. Remember the share market is around about minus 10. Over the last three years, 4.4%. That's not 
that good. Five years is 6.6 .6 and then 10 years is 6.3. Still underperforming the market in each of those figures. Are they a value stock? At 8.7 price to earnings, the market is 14.31, so yes. Let's have a look at their growth. Well, over the last 10 years, well, they're all positive territory, but sales has only been up 6% annualized over that period, which is not super good. Five years, well, they've perhaps done a little bit better, but sales is where they're struggling. The one year cash flow is minus 14.1%, which is very concerning for me. What's happening that's causing this minus cash flow? That would have to be looked into. But going forward, you see the two year forecast is minus 20.2% for earnings per share and minus 21% for dividends. So they're both going down. This is not a good sign. This is management's own forecast. And so that does not fill me with any confidence at all. Let's have a look at the dividends. Are they consistent? Well, no, is the answer to that. 49 cents. 50 cents the next year was 19.5. So something happened there. Now we jump up to 88 cents, but I have not forgotten about the 19.5 cents. So if you, this was a pure dividend play for you, you needed the consistency, you would need to look elsewhere. I have another video coming out shortly which will answer the question, are high yield dividend ETFs a good idea or are they just a dividend trap? So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Our next company is CAA Capital Limited. They are in materials. What kind of materials? You'll have to find out. And they have a dividend yield of 8.95%, which is lovely. Capital Limited is engaged in the manufacturing, marketing, and distribution of fabricated and semi fabricated aluminium related products. What's the difference between semi fabricated and fabricated? Fabricated, finished product. There you are. Use it straight away. Semi fabricated means here's an in between product, it's not raw bauxite. <laughs> but it is aluminium and you can go ahead and manufacture it yourself do step number two so they make both caa offers its products and services under the brands genesis amplamesh duraco ags artisan future line envy elegance and urban plus wow what a lineup there this is their website which is quite nice it's all silver like aluminium what would you expect? This is one of their factories. Is this manufacturing or is this distribution? Well, I think it's probably distribution considering there's no big smokestacks. They're not smelting the aluminium. Maybe they could roll it and press it in here. Let's jump into one of these factories, not necessarily the same one. And this looks like it's probably distribution to me. They're wrapping things, etc., etc. So that's inside one of the factories. Here is their one year graph. What do we see here? It's outperforming the ASX 200 quite well over the one year and finishes up that way. So well done over the last year. 8.46%, remember the ASX 200 has gone into minus territory. Over two years, we've outperformed again, going up, 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 very good. Ah, oh, lovely. 117% return over two years is nothing to be sneezed at. How are they going over five years? Well, they're in and out of the ASX 200 there. They can't make up their mind. At the crash in March, they were below at that point, but subsequently around about September, they have recovered and outperformed the ASX 200 rather well. So they've got their second wind. And now over that period, they've been 108%. And so well done to them, yeah. The one year return is 12.7%. Three years is 38.1, that's magnificent. Annualized over three years. And five years is 22.2, yep, this is amazing. And if you go back to the 10 year, well, you know, 10.7, that's nothing too special. But certainly from the five year onwards, they've been rather well, including making a profit at the one year, which the ASX 200 cannot. So thumbs up to them. Are they a yield play? Well, the answer is 3.23 and the market is 9.52. So yes, they are on price to earnings. Let's have a look at their growth rates. Over the 10 years, well, the sales are not particularly impressive. 3.2% annualized over 10 years, yes. Earnings, 13.8, 19.2. Go forward five years, they're going up, notice, from the 10 year period. So they're actually getting better over time. In the one year, very good on sales, but notice there on cash flow, it is minus 22.2. Something has gone wrong. Something's going on with cash flow in a couple of companies that we've noticed this year. But earnings are 354.1. So you'd have to dig in to the company reports to find out exactly what is going on with the cash flow. But ultimately, a company lives 
or dies by its cash flow, so we can't ignore it. Going forward, we have no forecast at all. Okay, interesting. The dividend history. Well, if you go right back, and I do mean right back to 1996, it was paying dividends there on and off, and then suddenly nothing. Zero, 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 no dividends at all. So obviously during that period, they were not doing well with their finances or alternatively, they were in massive growth mode and had no money to spare. In more recent years, 1.2, 1.2, 1.5, so that was cut in half, up to 45 cents, up to 70 cents, but that is so recent. I would not be confident based on that history alone. Our next company is BHP. Now, we've discussed BHP already when we talked about the Woodside Energy Group and the collab that they're having with what was Woodside Petroleum. Now, let's look at BHP purely. It's of course in materials, it's a miner, and it is 9.46% dividend yield. BHP Group Limited, formerly BHP Billiton, so they've dropped the Billiton name, is a diversified natural resources company producing commodities along with substantial interest in oil and gas, which of course now has gone off to Woodside Energy. BHP's principal business lines are mineral exploration and production, as well as petroleum exploration, production and refining. BHP's assets, operations and interests are separated into petroleum and potash, copper, iron ore, coal and nickel. So here is their website and you see some trains which are massive and are no doubt carting some of their mining products. Our products help build a better, clearer future. When I first read that, I tended to read it as build a better, cleaner future. Cleaner, not clearer. Why would a mining company put the word clearer future? What are they making clearer? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But if you wanted people to accidentally read it as cleaner future, then that's exactly what you'd put in. So what do they produce? Well, from their website again, this is copper, iron ore, nickel, metallurgical coal, and potash. Metallurgical coal, what is that exactly? There are two types of coal in the world. Well, three really brown coal and black coal. We know about those, but within the black coal, there is coking coal or metallurgical coal, and there is thermal coal. What's the difference? Well, thermal coal, thermal is heat. The heat produces steam. If you heat up water, that turns to turbines, which makes electricity. So that's thermal coal. Often they call that lower grade coal because even brown coal can produce steam, which can produce electricity. The really high grade coal that gets extra, extra hot is coking coal. Well, it's the coking process where you actually get metals, you melt them, and the normal thermal coal isn't hot enough. So that's your high grade coal. So it looks like BHP now is specializing in high grade coal, not so much thermal coal. BHP Group and Woodside Petroleum entered into a share sale agreement for the merger of BHP's oil and gas, but not their coal. So they're obviously retaining that. This is a picture of BHP. This is one of their factories at night with the pretty lights. What's going on there? Well, we'll never know. Over the one year, this is BHP's graph versus the ASX 200. We notice BHP has gone down terribly over this year and then they've come up 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 and they've met it oh and they've outperformed they've finished on top at minus seven percent so they've still gone down but not as bad as minus 10 so only just beat the market over the two-year period they were above then below and then above above and they escaped and then in september Something happened in September. It was not a good time for them and they have crashed right through the ASX. That's, that's a massive crash. Underperformed right through up to December and now have outperformed and go out the other side. Oh, their fortunes have changed 26% over that two year period. All right, so it all ended well. Now over five years, we're above the market, above the market. Big crash there in March. We don't go down as far as the ASX 200. Come up, up, up. We can see the crash, but over the five year period, it doesn't go as near as low as the ASX 200. And we've been up, up, up. And if you've held BHP for five years, you'd be very impressed at 89%. So their return this year is minus 5.8. Remember the market's gone down about minus 10. Over three years, 11.5, yeah, it's okay. Five year period though, 20%. That's amazing. That includes these more recent years but you would have had to held it for those five years. And if you go back to 10 years, about average with the market. Is this a value stock? Well, the PE is 6.11, yep. So yes, under 14.31, which is the market average. 
the growth rates well. If we go back 10 years, sales is fairly slow at 3.1, but everything is positive. In particular, the dividend was growing there at 16.7% annualized over 10 years. It's good. Up to the five years, everything's growing. So that's good. The book has gone down slightly, so they shrunk something there. One year, things are going quite well. 29% up from 15, 58% there up from 21. Yeah, amazing, basically. And 129% on the dividends. Wow. Okay. Two-year forecast is 25% growth on earnings and 0.9. So just a little bit on the dividends. They're impressive indeed. Let's have a look at the consistency of the dividends. Well, 159.1 up to 191.6 down. 268.2. However, you've been more than compensated recently with 402.7. So not exactly consistent, but you were compensated for it. Our next company on the list and third last is Rio Tinto. So we've had BHP, the big Australian miner. Now we're into Rio Tinto, which returns 13.26% dividend yield. Rio Tinto Limited is engaged in minerals and metal exploration, development, production and processing. The company's portfolio of assets is condensed into four product groups, aluminium, copper and diamonds, energy and minerals and iron ore. This is their website. It's a picture of the city. Do they mine in the city? Obviously not. But they're talking about the steel that they produce to make the city. We produce materials essential to human progress. I noticed this also on BHP's website. It's all about are we clean? Well, not necessarily, but we are essential to progress, to human progress, so we're okay. Here is a lovely picture of Rio Tinto and their mining equipment. It scoops up all the ore, transports it along the conveyor belts and out the other side. Very impressive. Let's look at their one year graph and see if I'm impressed by that. No, I'm not. It dips down below the ASX 200 for most of the time, goes back up through it, and then no, it ends down much lower at minus 20%. So you have disappointed me, Rio. Over the two year mark, what am I looking at? Well, it's sort of going up and down, but then it recovers. Oh, this is such a roller coaster ride. It goes in and out of the ASX 200. How does it end up? Oh, a bit below it at 4.098 percent throughout the two years. Throughout the five years, can you do better? Well, you outperform the ASX 200, outperform. Yes, you don't come as low in the crash in March, outperform, outperform. Oh, look at that. You've done very well. So over the five year period, we have 57.767%. So good over that period. Now, your total returns, which includes dividends, minus 15.2%. No, not good. Three year, 9.7%. Mm, bad average. But Five year, very impressive, 17.8%. Yeah, I'll take that. And the 10 year, 13.2, that's up a bit on the market. Is this a value play at 5.42 price to earnings compared to the market of 14? Yes. How are your growth rates? Well, if we go back over 10 years, not too bad, actually. They're all clean across the board. Five years, things have grown. Look at the figures on the left. Look at the figures on the right. They line up and they're getting bigger. So well done on that. This year, very impressive across the, yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing. And then if we go into the growth rate, no, not so much. Down 1.8% on earnings forecasted over the next two years. And the dividend though is going up. You were doing so well until you showed me that you have a negative future. Let's have a look at your dividends. Well, 422 up to 565 up, 613 up 1000. So amazing from a dividend consistency point of view. I will give you that. The next company is Magellan Financial Group, which we have spoken about before. And I said some not pleasant things about them, no doubt. Let's see if I still have that opinion. It has a dividend yield amazingly at 15.15%. Magellan Financial Group is a funds management business based in Sydney, Australia. MFG offers international investment funds to high net worth and retail investors in Australia, New Zealand and institutional investors globally. MFG's investment funds are the Global Equity Strategy and Global Infrastructure Strategy. Here is their website, which, well, I don't like the picture, out of stock. Now, no doubt that's talking about some article, but if that's the picture that you face when on the home page you go to Magellan and that's it's got out of stock, that's not a very good sign, I don't think. Once again, the website is too narrow. It does not automatically expand to the size of the browser. So minus points for that. You're a large company. You've got plenty of money. Fix your website. And here's a picture of what it looks like inside their office. And, well, that's probably the CEO. 
over the one year, what do we find? Well, Magellan has gone down, down, and more down, and well, basically terribly. Minus 76.238% over one year. That's three quarters of the value lost in just one year. Yeah, okay. Over two years, how they've gone? Well, they've started off with the ASX 200 and then they've lost it. And they've gone down, 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 and yeah, minus 79.14% over two years. Terrible. Now, over five years, have they done better? You can see in the past they were high flyers. Look at that. From December, March upwards, they well and truly outperformed the ASX 200, even in the dip. Now, they did have a massive crash. But because they've gone so high, overall they outperformed the ASX 200, they're going up, up, up. But see, recently, September, they've just done so terribly, they've lost all the gains over that five year period and basically come down and we'll really just have a look. Minus 53.571%, so underperformed the ASX 200 over that period. So, not good. One year, the annual rate of return is minus 71.1%. Three years, minus 37.2. Five years, minus 8.7. There's nothing here I like. And then, yeah, over 10 years, 23.2. But you would have had to hold the stock for that entire period. You can't buy it. Recently, you can't buy it at the five-year mark or the three-year mark. And you probably would have sold it by now because you would have been so unimpressed with them. Are they a value stock at this point? Yes, 6.12% price to earnings. Let's look at your growth rates. Well, at the 10 year mark, impressed overall. So that's interesting. At the five year mark, notice they've come down. So 38 on sales down to 14.7, 43 down to 15. So they're getting worse over time. And this year, the one year mark, minus 2.2% on sales, minus, 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 Minus. So there's your answer there. Going forward, they're saying that their earnings are going to go up by 6.8%, but the dividend is being slashed by 21.1%. Wow. So none of this is impressing me. Let's look at the, at the dividends, see how consistent they are. 134.5 cents, up to 185, good, up to 214, good, slightly down to 211. So honestly, not too bad overall, but we know what is coming, don't we? A dividend slash of minus 21.1%. A final company. We've reached the top as far as dividend yield is concerned on this stock screen. What's it going to be? Well, it is Fortescue Metal, which is a miner, and its dividend yield is 17.04%. Is it a basket case? Is that why the dividend yield is so high? Or is it so amazing? And that's why the dividend yield is so high. We shall find out. Fortescue Metals Group is an iron ore production and exploration company with assets located in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. Our other miners so far, BHP, Rio, very long statements about everything they do. Notice Fortescue Metals, no, we just talk about iron. We're not talking about coking coal. We're not talking about copper and diamonds. It's a pure iron ore player, and that's what you get. Here's a picture of their website, which is a lovely picture with a massive dump truck. See the wheels behind you? But unfortunately, it's obscured by the March 2022 quarterly production report. How about you put that off to the side so it's not so big, so I get impressed with the photo of the big truck? For example, how impressive is this? With a motion blur because it's moving. I love this photo, absolutely love it. Let's see what I think about the one-year graph. Well, I'm not loving it so much. Fortescue Metal came down well below the ASX 200 and down, down, down. Tried to come up and meet it, but no luck and basically finished down minus 28% there. So no, not impressed over the one year. Let's go back over the two year. Well and truly above, outperforming the ASX. They were a bit of a darling of the market at one stage. Hit September and they've gone right down, come back up in December. All right, good, you've recovered there and finished up over the two year period, good. So over two years, not bad, over the one year, not so good. Let's go back to the five. Well, the five year has it going under the ASX 200 for quite some time there until around about December, March, when we outperform the ASX, we go up, up, up. And then, well, basically we just continue like that. 227% over that five years period, that's pretty good. So if you've held it for some period of time, you would be happy. Now, let's have a look at the figures. Total return over one year, minus 18.4%, that's bad. But over three years, 45.2%, wow, that's amazing. Five years, 
40.9 and 10 years is 24.8. Often the companies are flowing off by the time they get to the 10 years. Not the case here though. 24.8% over 10 years is very impressive. Are they a value play? 5.81, yeah. And the market is 14.31. Book value is 2.22 on average. So that's a bit higher than the market. How are your growth rates? Well, over the 10 year period, look at that. Very good, 18.3, 22.3. I like everything I see. Five year, they're going up a bit. Yeah, good, very impressive. One year, they're going up again a bit more. Impressive, impressive, impressive. Look at that dividend yield going up 103.4. The forecast, however, in the two year period, the earnings are going to go down by 18.1%. That is not a good sign. Dividends are going down by 21.6%, not a good sign. So we were doing okay, but going forward, we will not. Let's have a look at the dividend consistency, 45 cents down the next year to 23, up to 43, up to 76. You're being compensated by 358. Overall, I think you'd be happy, but it wasn't totally consistent. So there is a top 10 according to this list. But do you know, there is a secret list of dividend yield stocks that I have been keeping from you where you can earn $81,263 if you own the right stocks. Go ahead and click on the video now.